Hey guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. Can you guys hear me? Gonna try and speak up, because I either get, when I yell, it's too loud, when uh, I don't yell, it's too soft, I don't know. I'm trying to make sure that the audio is okay for you guys so you can hear the juicy, juicy WikiLeaks. Mmm, it tastes so good, it's like turkey on Thanksgiving. And I have my trusty uh, Beauty and the Beast coffee mug to help me along with this, as uh, I find that as I go through these um, in these WikiLeaks, the more coffee I need. Hmm. It could be due to the fact that it's the most depressing fucking thing ever. So, let's continue. Hi guys, I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. I forgot to say that. It's really nice here in the New York area. I really hope that people are, you know, hanging in there before the election. I know that it's going to be a rough road. Uh, I'm doing these WikiLeaks reports up until the election. Despite the fact that, you know, the rest of the mainstream media is going to be burying them. You know what? TYT Politics has got you covered on WikiLeaks coverage. So don't forget, go check out Jordan's videos from Standing Rock. Uh, don't forget to check out Eric's videos on Trump. Don't forget to check out any of our videos and share them to everyone in your family so we can get paid. Because, you know, that's a big deal, right? We want to get paid. So, WikiLeaks revelations. I'll get right to it. As everyone knows, uh, or maybe you don't know. What kind of broke a few days ago was that Citigroup and Citi uh, had basically picked out President Obama's cabinet for him. I'll read here from New Republic. The cabinet list, which was a WikiLeaks, so WikiLeaks revealed the uh, a list of ca uh, suggestions labeled by female, uh, minority, Latino, uh, disabled to show to President Obama in 2008 and John Podesta, who was heavily involved in his campaign, obviously, um, and the transition team. They were trying to find people to fill Obama's cabinet when he took office and Citigroup basically gave them a list of names and he did it. He just appointed those people. So uh, just to summarize, I'll read to you from the New Republic. The cabinet list ended up being almost entirely on the money. It correctly identified Eric Holder for the Justice Department, Janet Napolitano for Homeland Security, Robert Gates for Defense, Rahm Emanuel, oh, that fucking asshole, Rahm Emanuel, for Chief of Staff, Peter Orzog for Office of Management and Budget, uh, Arne Dukan for Education, see, like, some of these names I don't even know, uh, Eric Shinsaki for Veterans Affairs, Kathleen Sebulis for Health and Human Services, Melody Barnes for Domestic Policy Council, and more. So you just see that Citigroup basically has their claws into even the, the positions that we would not consider that important uh, in the cabinet. He basically did word for word what they wanted back in 2008. Um, for the Treasury, three possibilities were on the list. Robert Rubin, Larry Summers, and Tim Geithner. That is unsurprising. But uh, Citigroup, or City, basically just said, Obama, do what we say. We gave you money, so you are our bitch. So do what we say and put uh, our pro, the pro-city people, the pro-banking people into your cabinet. You're the hope and change candidate. Fuck that. Do what, do what we want. We want things to be business as usual. In fact, we want things to be worse under the guise of things being better. So, not saying it was worse than the Bush administration. My God, it was not. But uh, the since 2000 and since Citizens United in 2010, I don't know if you could actually uh, make the argument that money in politics has gotten better. It's definitely gotten worse. And that's with the Democrats in office. So with that in mind, a new email came out from John Podesta uh, talking about where he responded to Citi's clause being put into the transition team, into the Obama administration, um, them just having way too much say in the process. Podesta actually had some pause. You would not think so from the nature of the rest of these emails, but listen to how he worded this, uh, this pause that he, you know, that he, that he expressed. I'm okay with being characterized as an off the reservation, crazy pitchfork populist, but we should be very careful to not seem to be giving city a pass on the guideposts we are applying to others. And by others, he means other banks that are giving them notes on what uh, positions are going to be filled in the Obama administration. So is it really off the reservation and crazy populist to say, maybe the banks should be giving us lists to 
uh, up, shouldn't be running the, the federal government, shouldn't be running the executive branch. Maybe they shouldn't be giving personnel suggestions and the president just copy and pasting that list and making his cabinet those positions. So Podesta thinks, back in 08 at least, that that is an off-the-reservation populist idea, while the rest of us think that's how you <laughs> have a, a government that's accountable to you, that not that banking executives are appointing positions in the government. The rest of us would think, that, that, that's common sense, but it's the Washington bubble. What we learn about in these emails, more specifically, uh, is that, or more broadly, that's the opposite of specifically, is that this is just business as usual for people in Washington. They've conveniently forgotten that having banking and big money involved in their politics is incredibly corrupting. The Democrats, the people's wing of, uh, of government, have completely forgotten that, uh, that this has corrupting influence. It's very easy to forget when, your money, uh, when money is lining your pockets, you know? So, uh, I just thought that was very funny that Podesta uh, believed that that was a crazy pitchfork for populist idea. I couldn't tell if he was being sarcastic, but some there was some truth to that, you know? That no one says, hmm, maybe let's rethink this. Maybe let's rethink giving all of this access to big banks when we are supposed to be a party of the people. Hope and change. I know, I know, I know, I know. So, here is another one. So, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Daschle, I'm sure some of you guys know who that is, uh, Senator from, uh, from North, South Dakota, sorry, I'm so used to saying North Dakota because of our coverage. So, um, very steeped in the Democratic establishment, he sent an email to John Podesta back in, uh, well actually just in 2016 in March, and he said, Good morning, John, you may remember uh, Pete Stavrianos, he was the mastermind behind just about all my political victories in South Dakota. He has asked that I pass this along to you. So this is advice about how to run her campaign. Thought. Suppose Hillary began effusively praising Sanders, this is March of 2016, and his wing of the party saying openly that she has been changed in her views by them and she has perhaps misjudged the degree to which money and politics has corroded and corrupted the process. So you think uh, that, of course, you know, she should just see that money and politics has money has corrupted the political process but she has to be told by an outside advisor that no make it seem like seem like you actually are, are praising him and you agree with some of those ideas because even if she does agree with these which i don't think she does the emails show that she has no core so whatever she thinks she can get away with within the span of you know political uh get you know getting political gain that's what she will do so she takes the polling numbers, she gets 200 focus groups, she gets advisors from this Democratic establishment senator, this Democratic establishment congressman, this ancient um, dude that's been involved in the Democratic establishment, or even the Republican one, and takes their advice and applies to her campaign and throws whatever she needs to at the wall to get the, the support that she wants. And that's how Hillary Clinton works. That's how this game is played, in her opinion. So, I'm sorry, I always get on these rants. He, he says, um, assumptions. She needs at least some minimal support and enthusiasm from core Sanders voters to supplement Trump fear as a driver of these voters to the polls in the fall. You would think, I wonder if she took that advice enough. Because it's a pretty close race. Her support from superdelegates and minorities will defeat Sanders regardless of her approach during the remainder of the primaries. I'll repeat that. Her support from superdelegates and minorities will defeat Sanders regardless of her approach during the remainder of the primaries. Think about that. So this is in March 2016, and what he thinks is you could do, you could, like, uh, like, like Trump said, I could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and it wouldn't matter, I'd still get elected, I'd still have people that love me. Hillary Clinton could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue, and what this guy is saying is that it doesn't matter the approach you take with Sanders in the primary. The fix is in, girlfriend. You're gonna be the you're gonna be the nominee. You're gonna be the Democratic presidential nominee. And 
that's insured by the minorities, which by the way, which, which party was, or which Democratic candidate was more uh, dismissive of minorities? Think about it. And because the superdelegates, they, they're not changing. Because, yeah, in 08, it was all fun and games when Obama won the popular vote. They had to go over to him, and they weren't as pissed off about doing so because, you know, he was also establishment. Yeah, he was a little, maybe he had more progressive rhetoric than her. But yeah, you know, it's okay. We'll, we'll swallow our pride. We'll do it. Um, but now when it's Sanders, an actual populist who hates corporations and wants, not hates them, but wants to rein them in, the, the, de the super delegates aren't moving, let's say that. So, what he's basically saying, and this advice, this advisor to Tom Daschle is saying, Hillary Clinton, you just, the reason you have to be nice to Sanders supporters is so you can defeat Trump in the fall. The fix is already in. Don't worry about it. Your approach doesn't matter. But playing the long game, it's probably best to bring some of them in. How, it's not really working that well for her, because it clearly wasn't that sincere. But again, my speculation, but it doesn't seem very sincere. So, that was a very interesting tidbit to me. Everyone kind of knew that the fix was in already. Um, da, da, da. Here, okay, so, this guy is all over the emails. Brent uh, Badowski. He uh, is an opinion writer. He is a journalist. Um, this is what I referenced in the title of this video. He works for The Hill, is where I've seen him most. Um, and he also does columns for the Huffington Post, but like every person in America does columns for the Huffington Post. So mostly from The Hill, he uh, always sends these emails from a webtv.net um, account. I will read to you this email. Frankly, I thought it was dumb for McCaskill and Gutierrez to be attacking Bernie. Sorry, you know, I need my uh, Beauty and the Beast mug. I also have a Hermione one kind of badass like my mug collection's pretty off the fucking chain but don't worry about it don't i'm i'm, I'm like i'm not a, i'm not a nerd um <laughs> frankly i thought it would be dumb for mccaskill and gutierrez to be attacking bernie we are going to need his voters to turn out for november in november for hrc uh he won't be nominated this is again people in the democratic establishment only concerned about bernie voters so they turn out not to represent them but they need to turn out against trump in 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 the fall and he's not going to win, so that's all we have to be focusing on, right? Um, we are going to need his voters to turn out for, in November for HRC. He won't be nominated. I am doing the opposite. Re uh, repeatedly writing friendly and positive pieces about Bernie as an HRC supporter. And when the time is right, I will have money in the bank with him and his people as, lib as a liberal to urge them to come out in force to vote for HRC which is not a given, and we won't have uh, much margin for error in, the close, in a close election, Brent. So, uh, Brent Badowski is basically saying, look, I was for you the whole time. I threw them some bones. I wrote them some positive pieces. You know, I scratched their back. Now they're, they gotta scratch ours. Now I'll have money in the bank, so when I turn to my actual true uh, love that money, money, money in the general election, and I say, you got to vote, vote for Hillary Clinton, then they'll listen to me. Could it have been establishment figures that it wasn't about political capital for Bernie supporters? It wasn't about getting in their good graces and journalists having them do one thing because they, they, uh, gain favor with them in the primary. It was about ideology. It was about anti-corruption. It was about a political revolution. They can't figure it out. Here's another uh, very interesting aspect of journalists and their, um, their discussions with uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign. Glenn Thrush of Politico was also all over these emails, clearly very friendly with the Hillary Clinton campaign. The, uh, title of this uh, email is super delegates did you see that mj thing don't don't know what that means says you got 400 plus commitments in reference to super delegates off the record true thanks this was in 2015 august 
So the rumor, there's no confirmation. There's no response to this email that I can find, but what Glenn Thrush is essentially saying is that he had heard through the grapevine in August of 2015 that they had 400 plus commitments uh, in, with superdelegates. Does any of this surprise you? But this is why these are important. We will now have the ammunition to say, you, you can't call us conspiracy theorists anymore. This is proof. And no matter how many times you say Russia, 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 Marsha, 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 Putin, 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 scary, boogeyman, don't look, don't look over here, shiny object, hello. We will have the ammunition to actually come back at you. So watch your back establishment because now the, we have information and information is power. Knowledge is power. Here's another. Warning to Hillary Clinton from the same fucking Brent Badowski. So the Hill writer. He's just all over these emails. Best friends with everyone in the Hillary Clinton campaign. It was not uplifting. This is in, uh, by the way, uh, March 2015. It was not uplifting to learn in recent hours that problems with foreign donations to the Clinton Foundation continue. Hillary Clinton was still making paid sp uh, paid speeches for hire this week, and to uh, Tony Rodham is hustling gold uh, mining deals in Haiti. From the minute the email story broke, I have been out there publicly and unequivocally supporting Hillary Clinton in multiple ways and in multiple media, unlike many Democrats and unlike most in the media. Right. No one in the media supports Hillary Clinton. Okay, cool, cool, Brent. Uh, my mama taught me <laughs> as long as that long ago that when I am seriously angry, I shouldn't count to 10. I should count to 10 and choose my words carefully. This is weird. In the spirit here, my, in the, I'm sorry guys. In that spirit here is my toned down advice, which I seriously doubt the Clintons are hearing from those close to them. And if they are hearing it, they are not understanding it. If there is one thing that could well bring down a Hillary Clinton candidacy, it is this cycle of money issues about which I am not, I am now feeling, feeling red alerts, loud bells, warning signals, and red flags, and I'm now seriously pissed off that there's a real chance that her candidacy and the Democratic Party could be destroyed by these self-created dangers that continue to proliferate the closer she gets to a presumably announcing her candidacy. If she is not hearing this from others, please feel free to forward this to her. I will play the bad guy here because I do not want her money and I, because I do not want her money and because she needs to hear this from her friends and she will uh, sure as hell be attacked for this by her enemies and it will be megaphoned throughout the media and foreign donations and paid speeches and hustling gold mining deals by her brother are entirely legitimate issues uh, that are self-created and must be self-corrected before it is too late. And I do not believe the Clintons fully understand the magnitude and immediacy of the danger that is the current political and media climate. Brent. Boom. So this guy, I have a ton of problems with him and how he's, you know, duping Sanders supporters and is, you know, way too buddy-buddy with the Clinton campaign to be considered uh, a journalist unless he came out and said, I'm a supporter of Hillary Clinton. You can do that. If, as long as you're open about your bias, that's fine. Jordan and I make no qualms about saying that we were for um, Bernie Sanders in the primary. But this dude is saying, I have qualms about, or I, I'm worried about all of these paid speeches, Hillary Clinton, your brother, Bill, and the Clinton Foundation, stop raising money. And you hear this throughout the emails. People are terrified that, uh, people close to her are terrified that her greed, essentially, I'm not going to mince words with you, and her obsession with raising money will be her downfall. So you hear this throughout the emails, people saying, Look out, look out, look out. There's an iceberg ahead. Stop raising money. Stop giving paid speeches. Bill Clinton gave a paid speech, I think it was three days before or three days after, to some bank for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And people were trying to convince both Bill and Hillary that this wasn't a good idea. They just think it's fine. Just put a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred extra K in my bank account because I can get away with this. It's business as usual. So when I hear her say, I want to overturn Citizens United, that's my litmus test. Fine. Even if I believed you, that wouldn't be enough because this systemic corruption that you and your husband have been a part of and have been integral in goes way deeper than Citizens United. They 
They've raised three billion dollars on their own, the Clintons. Last one, because this is just a fun one. I couldn't, you know, do this video without a Nero Tandon story, right? Nero Tandon says to John Podesta in 2015, uh, September. Ahead of Andrea, which I'm assuming means um, Andrea Mitchell. I'm assuming it's not Andrea Tartaro, so Fox News. Um, have her beat the shit out of a punch doll, or maybe a staffer, so she <laughs> would be warm and charming in the interview. During the height of the primaries, this was uh, in 08, I'm assuming, when she was doing morning show after morning show, she would be relatively unpleasant. But then she actually did a good job on the shows. So, <laughs> Hillary Clinton, we all knew this already. And I won't begrudge her this. If she was like, you know, a true progressive and was really bad on morning talk shows, I'm sorry that she can't, you know, adequately drink wine with Kathy Lee and Hoda on the Today Show. I, I like, I wouldn't give a shit. Um, I'm sure Bernie doesn't want to go on with Matt Lauer and talk about the Kardashians' latest butt situation. Um, but it's just funny that they struggle so hard to make her likable. They struggle so hard to make her likable. And it's all, it's all fake, so. All right, guys. That's my WikiLeaks update. That's the best that I have for today. I will be up on Sunday, tomorrow, uh, updating you guys. On We're on overdrive because the election's on, on Tuesday. Obviously not trying to sway the election, but want to give you as much information as possible. Um, and no one else is doing this reporting. I've made it clear who I think is worse. I've made it clear that I think Trump is a nuclear bomb, but um, that's not going to affect the fact that I'm going to give you this information. So that's my stance on the matter. Um, someone says, fuck you, dumb Emma. Thanks. That made my day. All right. Have a great Saturday, guys, and don't pass out from Trump and Clinton madness. I, I know. It's rough on all of us.